Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Engineering Without Fear. This is uh, your host, Rusty, uh, but I'm not actually alone this afternoon. I've actually got a friend joining me. Would you like to say hi, friend? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Ben, and I'm coming to you from sunny Melbourne this afternoon. Fantastic. Now, you might have noticed that my friend, um, whose name is Ben, you weren't able to actually see him, and that's because we're using a, um, a Zoom webinar. And with Zoom webinars, you can only see me and any screens that either myself or when my host or my co-host shows himself can show you. You can't see him normally. You can't see anyone else that's actually attending and watching along with you. But that doesn't mean that you can't interact with us, okay? So with this, there's actually a few different ways you can interact. Number one is via a button down the bottom of the screen. It says Q&A. It's a Q with a little uh, funny squiggle. That's an ampersand. That means and and then an A after that. If you click on that, you can ask us any question that you want. So anytime uh, during our show this afternoon, you can ask us any questions. You can ask us to slow down, give you more information about anything. That's one way you can interact. A second way is if you look down the bottom of your screen, there should be a little uh, smiley face emoticon. And if you click on that, you have the option of either giving me a thumbs up or a little wave. And we might get you to use that a little bit later on. Now, there is a third way that we can actually interact with each other, and that's a way for us to ask you a question. And we do that via something called polls. And we've actually got a test one that we're going to pop up. Ah, goodness gracious, Rusty, my, uh, my, my polls aren't working very well. Just give me uh, a little minute. Um, how about you just continue, and I'll come back when I've figured out the problem. Alrighty. Well, we will have that in just a moment. So while we're waiting for my friend to fix that one up, I actually just want to say what today is part of. So today is being organised by Inspiring the Future Australia, and it's part of something called Inspiring STEM. Now, it's made possible through sponsorship through Amazon Web Services. And one of the great things that Inspiring the Future does is um, it helps bring volunteers with practical career advice and personal experience straight to students in the classroom. Um, so that's actually what we're going to be doing today. But if you're interested in finding out more, you can actually check it out on Inspiring the Future Australia's website. How are we going with that poll? Oh, well, not quite there yet. Um, so while we wait, oh, there we go. It's popped Her up. Apologies, there it is. So friends, um, you can actually select more than one answer. So if you're in a class of, um, you know, kids of different grades, or maybe you're sitting at home with a brother or a sister, um, you can actually add in as many answers that apply to your group uh, as are correct. So yeah, you just click your answers, um, and then you click uh, um, submit, and we'll get those answers in. Now, if you don't happen to see that poll popping up on screen, it could be because you're logged in via a web browser. Now, there is um, still enough time for you to log out of that web browser, download Zoom, and log back into the actual application. It only works for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Um, but if you don't want to do that, that's still fine. You'll still be able to enjoy all of these different hands-on activities. You just don't, won't be able to do the polls that we have. Alrighty, how are we going with that poll? All right, so I've just got about everybody answered, so I'm going to um, end that poll. And I can say, Rusty, we've got um, people from grade four all the way up to year nine. Um, but the majority of the people with us today are in grades four and five. Excellent. Well, there's going to be lots of fun for all of you, and we've got quite a few different activities to do, okay? So we're going to start off with a little challenge where I'm going to show you how to make something that can fire things across the room. The second thing we're going to be doing is playing with some paper, and then I've got a, a video about some paper, which is actually more interesting than what it sounds like. And then last up, we're going to be doing a construction challenge where we're going to build a tower as tall as we can, or with as many layers as we can. So let's get started. So for our first one, we're going to be making a catapult. And there's a few different things that we're going to need for this. We're going to need some paddle pop sticks. We're going to need some tape. I've got masking tape, but plain sticky tape will work fine as well. Um, we're going to need the lid of a bottle. So that can be a milk bottle, a soda drink bottle. It can be any sort of bottle. Um, and that's actually all the stuff that we need for this one. You could get away with using some elastic bands or a spoon as well. But for the moment, we don't need that. And I'll show you very soon how we could actually use that extra stuff if we have it. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we want to get three paddle pop sticks and lay them flat on top of each other. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap some tape around one end and then wrap some tape around the other end. That's the first step. And while I'm doing this on screen, you can do this at home or in your class. Now for the tape, you don't need very much, maybe about five centimetres, because it only needs to wrap around a couple of times. So that is step number one. I've got my three paddle pop sticks with two bits of tape holding them together. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to grab an extra paddle pop stick and I'm going to tape my lid to the end. I don't want it to be all the way up the very end. I want there to be just a little bit of a gap on the end. And I'm going to explain why that's important very soon. And now I've found the best way to actually tape it is a certain way, and I'll show you on my closer camera so you can actually see what I'm doing. Oh, that was not the button I was looking for. This is the one. Alrighty, so I've got my cap right there. And this time I'm going to get a little bit longer tape, maybe about 10 centimetres. And I'm going to start off by placing the first bit of my tape inside my bottle and then I'm going to feed it down the side, just like this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my paddle pop stick and I'm going to wrap the tape across the bottom. It comes across back over the other side and then it will go into my cap again. And I just push that all down like that. And now I've got my paddle pop stick taped to my all right, once we've got this section here, what we need to do is we're going to grab another paddle pop stick. We're going to place this under, and we want to tape it around the opposite side to where our cap is. Now, if I'm going too fast or if you would like me to repeat any instructions, pop that down in Q&A, and I can go over any steps for you a little bit slower. Alrighty, so now I've got my cap on this side, I've got my tape on this side, and I can actually pull these two apart. And you'll notice that if I let go, it crashes back down again. And that's because we're bending the stick when we do it. So this is actually a clue to what our next step is. I'm going to grab these three sticks, I'm going to open this up just very slightly, and I'm going to start to move these three sticks down and you'll notice that this starts to open up because this is wedging it in place. Um, Rusty, can I interrupt for just one second? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I don't suppose you could give us a very quick, well, not a, maybe um, kind of a, a, a rundown of all the steps we've done so far, just for um, those people who might have like missed one. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing we did was we grabbed three paddle pop sticks and we put a bit of tape around the top and around the bottom as well, and this holds them together as a stack. The next thing we did was we grabbed one paddle pop stick and we grabbed our cap and we taped that on nice and neatly. Then we grabbed another paddle pop stick, put it underneath, and we taped on the opposite side to where our cap is. So the two sticks are taped uh, at one end, at and, one end. and the lead is taped near the end other end, right? Yep, with a little bit of a gap. I've got, got a it. centimetre there. Mm -hmm. And then once you've got this little contraption, you'll see that this can open up and flicks back into place. So what we want to do is we want to open it up and then we're going to stick our little pile of three pedal pop sticks and I'm going to wedge it in to that gap as far as we can. And that is our catapult. Nice and simple. Now what we can do is we can hold on to this side one, keep it steady, and if we press down on that little gap that we left, that's our little handle. So if we press down and then let go, it flicks back up now in the opposite way to what it was doing before. If we were to put something inside this bottle cap, 
something interesting might happen. So I'm going to grab a little bit of tape. And I'm going to roll it into a little ball. But you could use a lot of different things. You could use like a bit of rubber. You could use um, a pom-pom. You could use almost anything. A little bit of paper that you've scrunched up. So if I hold it like this now, and that goes flying up over the camera. Now, the reason why this works is we've got a bunch of different materials that we've actually used. We've got our sticks, which are normally really quite stiff, and they don't like to move very much. We've got some tape with adhesive to hold it together. We've got some plastic as our ammunition holder for our little bits of paper. Now, the reason why this actually works is we need something springy to actually hold the energy. It stores the energy up as potential energy and then releases it as kinetic, moving energy. And what we're actually using to store it is actually this bit of wood. The wood doesn't like to bend very much. In fact, it will, once we bend it, it goes back into place. So because we've got it wedged apart, when we actually hold it down, it's actually storing that energy like a spring. So it's storing that potential energy and then it lets it go. And now I accidentally broke my tape. So I'm going to tape that up a little bit more and try that one again. Well, that's really interesting, Rusty. So um, it's a really good uh, kind of way of reminding, um, reminding us that this is kind of one of the things that engineers have to think about all the time is the materials they use. So an engineer um, gets given a problem to solve or, or something um, to build, uh, like a, you know, like a, like a catapult, I suppose. And they have to decide what materials are gonna be the best ones to use. Now, there might be materials that are better to use than paddle pop sticks for a catapult. After all, our one's only very small. Um, but uh, they've also got to pay attention to things like their budget, um, so, you know, maybe building it out of solid gold would be the best catapult, but it's, you're not going to be able to build very many of them before you don't have any money left. Um, and they have to also think about the physical features of their materials. So you might be able to find something even cheaper than a paddle pop stick, but it's not flexible enough. So it's always a compromise between the, uh, the sorts of materials that um, engineers would like to use or what they've got access to use or what would be appropriate to use. Ah, interesting. Now, I've actually got some extra materials here, and I'm going to show you how I could have made this a little bit differently, using different materials, but still achieving the same outcome of making a catapult. So I've still got my three sticks here that I'm going to use as a wedge, but instead of a cap and some extra stuff, I'm just going to use a spoon, a plastic spoon, and another paddle pop stick. And what I do is I grab these two, and I sticky tape them together at the end, Get it to stick together properly. There we go. So now I've got that. I might put a little bit more tape around it to make sure it's nice and strong. And now if I hold these apart, I can wedge my sticks in like that. And it doesn't really want to stay in there. So what I might need to do now is I think I'm going to grab my elastic band and I'm going to hold this in place and wrap this around. Now I could use string for this, it's just something to hold it into place. There we go, so now I've got another catapult. Using very different materials, but still achieving the same outcome. So let's make another little projectile for it. pop this into our spoon. And we can't really see that much on camera because it's all nice and white. But let's try firing it. And that actually went much further that time. So things that could affect this is how springy our material is. That will store more or less energy. So these are all things that engineers have to think about. What their goal is, what materials they have to use, and what compromises they have to make when making that. Alrighty. I think maybe we can move on to talking about some paper. 
Um, in just a moment, I have a very quick question for you, Rusty. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, and you might be able to help me with this. Uh, and Ken would like to know, because we were talking about how engineers need to think about the physical materials and their properties. And uh, Ken wants to know if computer engineers have the same sorts of things they think about. Do they think about the materials they use and, and their properties? Oh, absolutely. So there are computer scientists that actually are able to research materials and they can simulate it in a computer. Um, but then also when making computers and making simulations, you've got things that you've got to consider. Um, sometimes you might not have access to the most powerful computer, or maybe you've got to hire out some time on some supercomputers that other researchers have to share. Is there anything that you want to add to that one, Ben? Um, well, I'm also thinking about those kind of engineers that have to like build computers, right? So, so obviously there are different sorts of materials we could use for conducting electricity and which ones are like, you know, you would have materials that are really good at conducting, but maybe they're expensive or they're rare mm -hmm. and other ones that are easier to get, but they're not as good. Um, Kent also wants to know about software engineers. And I suppose software engineers don't work so much with like physical materials as they do with like their coding materials. So which coding language is going to be the one that's going to um, be the best for the particular application they're using. Yeah. Um, what device will it actually go on? Exactly. So, it, it makes me think of like Android apps and um, iOS apps and how they probably need different coding materials um, for each of those systems. And then also something as um, basic as if you wanted to code for, say, Apple or iOS, you have to have an Apple device to do the coding in the first place. So th those are the sorts of restrictions that those sorts of engineers might face. Alrighty, let's play with some paper. And for our first challenge, it's really quite simple. All we need is a single sheet of A4 paper. We need some books or something that we can stack it up on. I've got... Uh, couple of books here by Dr. Carl. And then we need something to put on there as weight. And I'm going to use some washers, but you could use coins, you could use dice, you could rub, use rubbers, pencils, anything is going to work, as long as they're very similar in size and shape. And that way you get an idea of how much of that thing that you're putting on there. I'm going to change over to this camera over here, and we'll get a close-up look at what we're actually going to do. Alrighty. I'm going to set up my two books like this because I've only got the two. I want to make a gap in between them. If you've got piles of books, you could do that so that you've got two piles of books next to each other. And this is about 20 centimetres apart. It needs to be shorter than your bit of paper. And what our challenge is here is we want to make a bridge across these two gap or these, this gap with these two books but we want it to be able to hold something. Now, I've just made a bridge just with a bit of paper like that. Let's see how many of my washers it can hold up. Well, not even one. So this is another challenge that engineers sometimes face, is they don't have the ability to get lots of different materials. Maybe they might be restricted to one type of material. So then they have to use different shapes to change the properties of that material. So this is your challenge. I want you to use one bit of paper and you're going to fold it in any way that you can to make your bridge as strong as possible and put as many things on there as you can. And you're going to count how much you can actually put on there. Now Ben's just shared uh, our challenge up on screen and he's got a timer there because we're going to give you a little bit of time to actually do this. We're going to give you four minutes. Now, friends, four minutes might not sound like a lot, um, but that's okay. We, I hope that you guys can kind of take this challenge in the right spirit. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but um, if it's tricky, then that means if you do get it, it'll be even more satisfying. And, of course, we'll be talking a little bit about um, uh, the kinds of bridges you might build afterwards, so you can probably still be building while we're talking. Here we go. I'm going to start my timer. Three, two, one go and you can see it's counting down so uh, you might want to spend some time having a think about the kinds of shapes you might want to use when i do this challenge i like to think of bridges that i have seen in real life because of course engineers had to help build those too so they've probably already done some of the thinking for us um so uh 
Uh, Charlotte wants to know, can we cut the paper? Uh, and hmm, what do you think, Rusty? I, I think that's fine, as long as you don't actually add anything extra to it. That's the first time that's been asked. That's great outside of the box thinking. Mm. So you can cut the paper, but we, you can't then use sticky tape to put it back together because you're only allowed to use that bit of paper and you can't cut, once you've cut it, uh, like you sort of can't add more paper from somewhere else. So if you want to, if you cut it up and you realize maybe what you did was not a great idea and you want to change your plan, you can always kind of throw that bit of paper off to the side and grab a fresh piece. But at the end, our bridge can't be made of anything except one piece of paper. Uh, and somebody whose name is a string of numbers, I can only assume they are some kind of robot, wants to know uh, if they can fold the paper. And yes, of course you can fold the paper if you think that would help. So again, as long as at the end, you've only used one piece of paper in your construction and nothing else, that's fine. Again, when an engineer gets given a, a job like, uh, you know, uh, you need to build a bridge that will cross over this river and has to be able to carry big, heavy trucks, they probably don't get told, and it absolutely must look exactly like this. Part of getting an engineer to do it is you're letting them use their expertise to make those decisions. And our, our string of numbers, potentially robotic friend, also wants to know, can they weigh down the sides? Well, Remember, you're only allowed to use one piece of paper. So, I mean, if you could work out a way to weigh it down with itself, but other than that, you can't add any extra weights. You can't use the books. They're only there to make the piles. So um, I appreciate your, uh, your problem-solving kind of ideas, but uh, we're really going to restrict down to just a piece of paper. Again, this is something that engineers have to deal with a lot. They've got, they might be told by, you know, the... The, the government or the council that's getting them to build the bridge, well, we only have a million dollars for this bridge and you can't spend any more than a million dollars. And it all must be, you know, locally sourced material. And so, you know, there are these, these um, extra kind of rules around what the engineer is allowed to do. And one of our rules is only one piece of paper and only one more minute, friends. So if you haven't uh, folded things up, or you haven't cut stuff up, or you haven't made your bridge, um, you've got about a minute to go. Now, I know there might be some people rushing. There might be some people absolutely pulling their hair out thinking, oh my gosh, I haven't even started yet. That's okay, because Rusty's going to build a bridge when this timer runs out. And look, here's the good news about us not being able to see you, is that you could still be building and we would never know. Just saying, we would never ever know if you did just the tiniest bit of cheating. Um, so, We've got about 30 seconds left. Hmm. I wonder what shapes people are going to decide to use. Because it looked like a flat um, bit of paper didn't work very well. It kind of couldn't even hold one little washer. So I'm, I'm interested in what shapes people think are going to be the strongest or they're going to be the most stable. Interesting. All right, friends. Three, two one and time's up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let Rusty take over the screen again. And Rusty might show us how he likes to build his bridges. But remember, if you're still building, I, I won't catch you, I promise. So you can um, kind of keep one eye on Rusty and one eye on your bridge. Fantastic. Now I forget, uh, Ben, do we actually have a poll for this to see how much their bridges could hold up or is that for uh, the next section? Uh, no, we do, we do have a poll about how successful their bridges were. Um, oh, actually, you know what? No, that's not true. We've got, we've got, uh, no, I, t I tell a lie. There is a poll for this. Goodness gracious. Once you've shown yours, if anybody's still building, I'll give them the chance to kind of catch up while you're showing us yours and then we'll do the poll at the end of that. Okay, fantastic. Alrighty, before I build my bridge, I just want to show you a little property of the paper, which is really interesting. So if I hold my bit of paper like this, nice and flat the way I was building my bridge before, if I hold it as flat as I can, even just the weight of it can't be held up by my bit of paper. I've got to kind of curve it slightly. But even if I curve it slightly, it bends down. And if I add a, just a little bit of extra curve, if I push down with any sort of weight, it will go down straight away. So when it's in this direction, it's not very, very strong. But what about if I hold it in this direction? 
so that we've got a really long side facing up and down. Let's try this. Well, it actually ends up being a lot stronger. So this gives us an idea of the orientation of the paper, which way it's facing will actually make it stronger. Now, before I show you how to fold this that will make it a bit stronger, I just want to mention that when my friend mentioned before weighing down the edges, that would actually add a bit of extra strength by adding what we call tension to it by pulling out on the sides. But unfortunately for this challenge, we can't use that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my bit of paper into thirds. This is really, really basic. And all I want to do is have a little U shape. So it's going to look like this. I've got my flat bit down the bottom, but I've also got two flat sides facing up and down. And we know that that's going to be strong just from looking at my paper before. So let's try this. I'm going to pop this up on here. And I'm going to start adding some weights to it. I'm going to see how we go. All right. Now, I'm very bad at counting, Ben. I might try and cheat a little bit. So I want you to count in your head. And I want my audience to count as well. See how many we get done. So I've got one, two, three, four, seven, five, 22, six, 109, seven, three quarters, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Well, remember, it couldn't even hold up one before, so we're already a lot stronger. Uh, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Oh, and I think I bumped it with my hand, but we got up to 26. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed too. Um, one of our friends said that they managed to get $14 coins. Uh, oh, wow, before the that's collapsed. Um, so friends, I'm curious about whose bridge worked really well. Uh, so I'm going to launch this poll. And the question just asks, um, could you complete the paper building challenge? And of course, we mean, could you get your bridge to hold up some weight? Um, if you're in a classroom with lots of people, give the answer that most groups got. So if you've got, you know, 10 pairs all making it and seven pairs got it to work, well, let's answer yes, because that way most of us got yes. And I can see pretty much everyone who's answering, or nearly everyone who's answering, um, has got their bridge to work. But hopefully the people who uh, didn't have as much luck have now got a little bit more inspiration, maybe some extra ideas to try out if they want to do this again another time. Alrighty, we'll give you a little bit of extra time to fill in that poll. But it looks like everyone did really well with that challenge. Well, the good news is even if your bridge didn't get to work, an experiment like this counts basically as a success because, of course, you're guaranteed to learn something if you uh, had a bridge that didn't work the first time, but you can get it to work better the next time you try. So I'm going to uh, end this poll. Um, and, yeah, I hope everybody, um, you know, had a, had a kind of good go at that. And... and um, uh, we've got a couple more results. So uh, our friend who got $14 coins said that they folded their paper over and over and over again into like a little skinny line of paper to try and make it thicker and stronger. Uh, it's like Charlotte paper, said... It's like paper going up and down. Mm -hmm. Charlotte said they did the same sort of U-shape as you. Uh, and another one of our attendees said they got six 20-cent coins, two 10-cent coins, one 5-cent coin, and a 50-cent coin. Holy that's guacamole, that's impressive. a lot. Yeah. Uh, all right, friends, so we have another uh, little paper challenge for you. Um, what's our next challenge, Rusty? Before we do that one, I just oh, want to mention, the reason certainly. why I chose this shape here is it's something that's used in engineering all the time, and we use them in something called I-beams. And they're used in bridges, they're used in big concrete buildings, and they're usually a bit of steel that goes straight up and down, with a bit of steel going over the top, and down the bottom. So it has this same shape. The two bits that are going across, they help it and stop it from bending in that direction. And the one that's going up and down, well, that stops it from bending in that direction. It's a really popular shape in engineering. Now, our next paper challenge is using one bit of paper again and one book. All we need to do is we need to use this bit of paper to hold our book up, but it needs to be high enough that we can actually do a fist bump underneath. And when I say fist bump, it's where you get uh, your fist and your friend's fist and you bump them together 
and you go fist bump. Or you could even explode on the outside. Now, if you do the sparkle fingers, you need to make sure that your book is nice and high up. You can't hold on to it. It has to be held up by only your bit of paper, one bit of paper, nothing else. So have a think. What sort of shapes could you use to hold up that book high enough for a fist bump underneath? And we're going to pop this challenge up on screen, and we're going to have a timer for this one as well. All right, friends, so yeah. using one single piece of paper, you need to have your uh, book lifted high enough off the table to fist bump underneath it. And this is going to be very similar to our last one. So we'll give a four-minute timer, but keep in mind that we might do some yakking afterwards. So you've probably got something closer to five or six minutes because um, we can't see you if you keep working after the four minutes. So uh, very quickly, here we go. Three, two, one one go so while this is counting down i'm just going to read a couple more um submissions from our q a so island flynn said they use six little clay things and a bolt they were able to hold it up um and uh now who was this before it was uh Linnell said that they used a triangular prism with their oh. a little piece of paper so that's an interesting idea triangles um the uh, our our potentially robot friend says this sound says this sounds pretty tricky. Well, the good thing is about tricky challenges is they feel even better when you get them. So absolutely. Uh, and, and Anna, Anna Karina, and uh, I'm not sure if this might be four people. Anna Karina, Anna and Miller, or it could be one person with with four names. Goodness gracious me! But um, they said that they managed to get 117 coins on their bridge. Now, first off, holy guacamole, where'd you get that many coins from? Um, but, uh, oh, okay, so I think this might be Max, uh, Max and Lucas or Max Lucas and maybe Anna is his mum's name. Ah, of course, Anna, there we go, Anna is my mum. Well, hello, Anna, and also hello, Max. Um, but uh, I hope you're, you're getting your... Um... Ah, and another friend wants to know, are you allowed to hold tape to hold the paper under the book? No, keep it. Look at our instructions. It just says use a single piece of paper. So I appreciate that everybody um, is thinking about the different materials. because We did talk a lot earlier about different materials and how they were useful. And you might uh, have found uses for other materials that would make this easier. But just a piece of paper. So again, you can fold, you can cut, you can whatever it is that you think is going to help. You can, as long as at the end, the only thing uh, that you're using is one piece of paper. And we're about halfway through our time now. But just adding on to that, yeah, using adhesives, sticky things, often makes building a lot, lot easier. So sometimes we don't have access to that. So we've got to use other methods to build with our materials that we do have access to. And sometimes using sticky things can be bad because it doesn't allow us to repair it if something breaks. Um. Also, I guess, uh, you know, if your material is something that's stretchy and springy and you're trying to use that stretch or that spring, then sticking it all down to a gun is not very useful either. All right, friends, we've got about a minute and a third. That's a quick maths right there. A minute and a third uh, left. So remember, uh, once we get the times up, Rusty's going to start showing you what, uh, you know, one of his ideas. And um, but while he's going, you could probably still your little structure there. Um, all right. Uh, ah, so Island Flynn has have an idea. Um, but Island Flynn, can I ask if you've already done yours and it worked and you've still got 48 seconds left, can you describe it in a little bit more detail? Because I'm not exactly sure what you mean. I'm not going to read it out to everyone just in case they are still... Um, they are still working. I don't want to give away all the secrets just yet. But maybe, can you write out in a little bit more detail what you did? Because I'm not exactly sure I understand. But I think, you, you know, it sounds like an interesting idea and I'd love to hear more. 25 seconds left, friends. Oh, you know it's getting intense when the timer turns red, you know? Like, that's... The pressure's on. Well, not really. There's not much pressure. I'm not even trying to build something at the moment and I feel the pressure. <laughs> All right, friends, five, 
four, three, two, one, and time is up. So remember, um, I can't see. So if you've still got a couple more moves to make, you can always make them while Rusty's going to show us what he was doing. Ah, so we've got a couple of successful people in the Q&A already. Well, let's have a look at Rusty's. Yeah, and while I'm showing everyone this one, pop down in the Q&A, what sort of shapes that you used for yours to get it to work? Now, the first one I'm going to try is, I'm actually going to try my bridge shape before, from before. We know that it was really strong in this direction. Let's see if it's strong in this direction. Not really. That didn't hold up the book at all. So let's maybe try something different. Hmm. Let's see. I reckon maybe I could just try rolling it. So I'm going to roll it nice and tight. Now the reason why I want to roll it nice and tight is so that when it comes undone, it doesn't come undone too much. Otherwise I'd have to use a bit of tape to hold it together, which is what one of our friends mentioned before. So now I've got a bit of paper on its side. Let's see if I hold it like this in this tube shape. We can actually get it to stay up. And it's high enough that I can do a fist bump and do the explosion afterwards. So that's really interesting. I just used a tube shape. Nice and hollow. There wasn't much to it. But this tube shape made it really strong in this direction. So let's have a think about some things that actually use tubes. Maybe if you've ever seen a building being uh, done up, like a building in the city, they have some scaffolding on the outside. And what they do is they have these long, big tubes for the, the places where all the workers can stand on while they either paint the outside or clean it. Can I, can I show off something really quickly? Oh, yeah. I was just going to get to that one, Ben. Oh, oh no, no, no. Yeah. It's, it's something else, I promise. Oh, OK. Because you got me thinking. Have a look at this. Right? Ah, so interesting. These very, very old buildings from ancient Rome thousands of years ago they're still standing and look at the shape they used look at these cylinders yeah so those columns are, are very strong and it's something that humans have known about for thousands of years mm -hmm. but you know what there's actually things that are in nature that naturally occur that use very similar sorts of structures as well and i think ben you might have something to show us that uses natural columns Absolutely. Uh, so I'm going to very quickly do this. Oh, hi, everyone. So, um, yeah, I've got something to show you that uh, that nature has kind of worked out to use a cylinder board, something um, that needs to be really strong. I'm going to show you a really zoomed in picture, though, first. See if you can guess what it is that I'm showing you. So I'm going to use my little microscope here. Um, I've got a little microscope and you can see if I, I can show you actually there's my finger that yeah, yeah, close. Uh, have a look at this. Tell me if you can figure out what this is. So have a look. It's got all these little tunnels in it, all these little holes, and all of them are round. They're like little tubes, little cylinders. Uh, now, while you're guessing, I'm having a very quick look, and I can see some people uh, saying they've built triangles, they've built hexagons. Um, Charlotte used a cylinder, Bella used a rectangle. Um, hmm, interesting. Uh, ah, Isla and Flynn say trees are a good example of cylinders that are very strong. That's very true. You don't find very many square trees. Um, all right. So, hmm, let's have a look. Okay, so... I'll show you what this is zoomed out. It's actually a little piece of bone. See, bone is something that has to be really strong, doesn't it? So have a look. We've cut this bone. Look at the end. Look at that shape. It's round and it's 
hollow, it's a little cylinder. But when you zoom in really close to a bone, it's got lots of little tunnels and cylinders in it. It's basically a cylinder made of cylinders. And that makes it both really strong and really light. We could probably have bones that were really strong if they were just solid rock or solid metal, but they make our arms and our legs really heavy and hard to move around. The good thing about a cylinder is it's hollow and that keeps it light. Um, all right, friends. So uh, I'm going to hand you back to Rusty because Rusty, um, we, normally we might show our little video here, but I think I'd rather do our last challenge. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll, and, we'll and play the video at the end. Hang okay. around longer can watch the video at the end. Perfect. Now, just mentioning uh, a cylinder made up of smaller cylinders, someone mentioned trees before, and they're actually very similar. They're a, a big cylinder, and they're made up of lots of tiny little cylinders that make up part of the wood grain. And so that is why they're so strong. All right, for our next challenge, we're actually going to use something else that's a bit of a, a cylinder, or it's very um, cylinder-like. We've got some either some spaghetti or some skewers. We need something that's long and strong. I'm going to use some spaghetti. And then we need something that's squishy. And this is going to be what we use as an adhesive for this one. And so we're going to use marshmallows. It could be jelly babies or some sort of jelly um, lolly. But you need something long and hard and something small and soft. It could be blue tack. It could be Play-Doh. It could be something like that, OK? And what our challenge is, is to build a tower. All you need is these two different things. And the challenge is to build as many layers to the tower. It doesn't matter how high you go. It just has to be as many layers as possible. So now we're actually going to use both of our lessons that we've learned so far. We're going to use different materials. And maybe there's a certain shape that might be really strong. So maybe just use one shape and see if that works out really well for you. Alrighty, Ben, we've got that up on screen. So using your materials, construct a tower with as many levels as possible. And we're going to give you seven minutes for this. Uh, now, friends, um, we're very aware that the session this afternoon um, sort of formally finishes at about quarter to three. But we're going to be hanging around till three o'clock. So even though this seven minutes is going to go kind of overtime, you are welcome to keep working. Even if you have to disconnect, you're welcome to keep working and see how many levels you can get. See who in your room or in your class can get the most. Um, otherwise, you're more than welcome to stick around. We'll be here till three o'clock. And so uh, you can share your results with us. Then we do not mind if you stay all the way at three o'clock. So we're going to start our timer in three, two, one, go. Um, so Rusty's building his tower in the background. And you might actually be able to see a little teeny weeny picture of Rusty on the you side. You might get a little bit of a hint. But that's okay, because of course engineers usually work in teams and they might use ideas that other engineers have come up with that they know work. There's, you know, there's a saying that there's no point in reinventing the wheel. Um, if some, you know, there's, if somebody's already worked out a great way to do something, well, you could always build on their idea, no pun intended, um, for the structure that you're making. So, um, yeah, this obviously our, our kind of hard material like our spaghetti. You'll notice if you look at spaghetti, it's already a little a cylinder. So, of course, we know it's going to be strong. Um, skewers are the same. They're also cylinders. They're going to be pretty strong. But um, what sort of shape do you think putting them together into would be the strongest? Because we've heard lots of people using different shapes today. Some people use hexagons and triangles. Someone used a rectangle. There was a zigzaggy pattern, which might be harder to do with the tower, but you never know. You might be able to have a go at that. Um, and we also looked at cylinders. So try and work out which one is going to be the best for towers. Um, the, uh, the other thing, of course, is you might think of real towers, real skyscrapers or big buildings that you've seen. I know there are a lot, for example, of skyscrapers in Melbourne that are like rectangular. But is that because rectangles are a good shape or because the block of land they're built on is a rectangle? Um, I know on the top of the art centre, just to the south of the Yarra River in Melbourne, there's a huge big spire on top. And that's made of all these weird shapes put together. It's kind of round and curvy. It's not rectangular at all. So I wonder which shape is going to be the best one for building really big towers. Now, remember, it's not how high your tower gets. It's how many levels it's got. So if you're using, say, toothpicks, or if you were using shorter bits of spaghetti, or you've had to break your spaghetti in half so that you've got more pieces, well, that's OK, because we're not counting how many centimetres tall it is, counting how many levels it gets. Because let me tell you, it's not... The, uh, 
It's not the length of the spaghetti that makes it difficult. It's the joining that can make this difficult. And more levels is more joins. So it should get more difficult no matter what uh, material you're using for your, uh, your kind of your struts, your sides. I've uh, decided to go for a, uh, a different strategy this time from what I've done in the past. So it'll be interesting to see if it works out for me. Interesting. Well, that's one of the best things I think about these little engineering challenges is that even once you've done the challenge once, right? So let's say that somebody in our um, webinar today decides they're going to try hexagons, right? That's the shape they reckon is going to be the best shape. Okay, so let's say they get, I don't know, four levels of hexagons before it falls over. Well, they could always do it again another day and change their shape and see if it makes a difference. There's always more things to try and new things to learn as a result of an activity like this. Um, now, if you're one of our older friends uh, from sort of year seven or eight or nine, there is no reason why this has to be, just because grade fours and fives can do this does not mean it's easy for you. Because of course, um, you might try a more complicated design. Or, um, you know, I often find that, um, you know, you guys will be a little bit more ambitious. You'll try to make yours just, you know, you won't use little things like toothpicks or bent, uh, broken spaghetti, you'll use the big ones, trying your tower as massive as possible. Um, so, you know, you can kind of always push yourself no matter where you're up to, see if you can get it even taller with even more levels and even stronger. All right, so we're just about halfway through our time. Um, um, and I'm very glad to see that we've still got everybody. Nice. Um, so uh, I hope everyone's doing all right. Now, if you've got a question, maybe about, you know, are you allowed to do this or you're allowed to do that, can always ask in the Q&A, that's fine. I am not building anything, so my hands are free to click questions and type and say answers. Um, you can see Rusty's got, uh, he's got some building happening. It's only a very small picture on my screen though, so I'm, I'm not really sure what his shape is, but we're gonna see at the end, I'm sure he'll share with us. And I've almost run out of marshmallows, so I'm gonna not be able to build any higher very soon. Well, look. That's what you get when you eat half of them, guys. Before you I even jump out, trust me, I was here. I was here half an hour before. He's just stuffing his face with him. Um, so, uh, although I will say that I've, you know, I always find it really funny watching people play. Was it Chubby Wubbies or something? Oh, that's a fun game. Oh, man. It's great. I mean, it's not, not engineering, but it's just fun. Um, friends, if you've got another question, maybe about different kinds of engineers or, or the sorts of things that engineers do, Maybe, you know, your partner is building something and you've got a free hand that you can type a question or you can put your hand up and say to your teacher, hey, could you please ask them something about engineering, you know? So please, please ask those questions because we do have some time at the end where we can answer them. We've even got two minutes now where I'm sitting around just, you know, just just blabbing on to fill to fill dead space. So, so if you've got a question, feel free to ask about it. There are all sorts of engineers. There are engineers... Um, that build um, vehicles like aerospace engineers. Uh, we already talked about software engineers and computer engineers. There are electrical engineers and civil engineers. Um, oh goodness, there are more than I could that, that you could poke a stick at. All right, our time has just gone yellow. No pressure though. No pressure. Um, and again, guys, just because um, we will be leaving at three o'clock, I know that a lot of schools will kind of keep going until 10 past or quarter past. Feel free to keep building. That's, that's fine, but we're not going to make you destroy stuff. Um, so, if, you know, if your teacher says it's okay, you could always just keep building and adding layers after we're wrapped up too. And it would be super cool if, um, if you guys wanted to. You could take a photo of the tower you've built or maybe the tallest one in your class and chuck it on the physics education website. We love seeing what people have, have made. And if it's particularly impressive, well, we can share it on our social media too. So everyone can uh, can be impressed by your uh, engineering prowess. Alrighty, I had just enough marshmallows just to make one last layer. And now I'm done. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so um, we've got about one minute left, friends, before we are going to show you Rusty's uh, tower. And we're going to have a bit of a yak about kind of the, the shapes that you've picked and get a, a, a poll of how many levels you guys have got. So, um, you can kind of see it on screen a little bit. Mm, it's, it's looking really interesting. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I want to know more, but I'm going to have to wait until the picture gets bigger so I can really see.
Ah, oh, Bella says, um, uh, I don't have any of the materials. That's okay, Bella, because you can remember, I'm sure, the kinds of materials we used. Something uh, rigid and straight, like spaghetti, and something squishy, like a marshmallow. So if you don't have those things with you now, that's okay. Quickly, quickly, quickly write down something straight and rigid and something squishy, and you can always try this another time. All right, friends, time is up. I'm going to give you back to Rusty. Fantastic. So let's have a look at my towel that I made. So I actually got to one, two, three, four layers. And I'm going to talk about why this works so well. But before we do that, I want to pop up a poll and we're going to see how your tower went. How many layers or levels did you actually get to? All right, friends. So yeah, how many levels or stories did your tower have? Now, friends, um, if you're in a class with lots of people, tell me the tallest one. Tell me the tallest tower that you got uh, in your class or in your room. Linnell, Linnell says 14 layers. Holy guacamole, that is a lot of layers. Linnell, I'm begging you, I'm on my knees. Please take a photo of that tower and put it on our Facebook page. Physics, F-I-Z-Z-I-C-S, education. Because I'm convinced that in my seven years of doing science programs with kids, I have never seen a 14 level tower. So I need to see it. I might cry myself to sleep tonight if I have not seen this tower. So please, please put a photo up on our socials. That will be I am amazed by that. I've, I've done this challenge with university students and I've never seen anyone get that tall. All right. Well, I'm, I mean, let, oh, and Josh and Matt said they got 21 levels. So again, I'm sure you guys wouldn't be fibbing. There's no way that you would lie to me. I'm very confident that we're all telling the truth. So it should be a very simple exercise of taking a quick photo and put it up on Facebook. And then, we did, I mean, as I say, it would be so cool. Um, uh, Flynn says, oh, we didn't get, manage to get any levels. Um, but that's okay. You can always keep building and trying again another time, even just after we kind of finish up this afternoon, um, uh, and see if you can get a, a couple of levels up. Um, ah, okay. Linnell's parent says there's about a one centimetre gap between all of Linnell's levels. I, that's, is it, are they levitating? Oh no, they're each one centimetre high. Ah, so maybe Linnell has snapped up her, uh, her spaghetti into lots of little pieces and is using that to make more levels. But I wonder if that's something engineers would take into account. Is it better to use lots of short little pieces than it is to use big long ones? Interesting. So, Rusty, what can you tell me about yours? Yeah, sure thing. So, let's actually have a bit of a closer look. Oh, looks like it's starting to deconstruct itself. I'll move it carefully over this way, and I'm going to change to my other camera so we can have a close-up look at it. So, what we can do is we'll have a close-up look. Let's grab this out. And you might be able to see a shape right there. What does that look like to you, Ben? Hmm, so the shape at the front there, well, that's like a, a downward pointing triangle. Perfect. If I turn it around this way. Oh, well, there's an upward pointing triangle. Okay. Turn around this way. There's another downward pointing triangle. And if we keep on going around, we've got all the same. And you might notice that in here, the base of it is a triangle as well. And then this one's a triangle. This one's a triangle. In fact, it's all made out of triangles because triangles are a very, very strong shape. Now, if we start to look at all of it from the side there, it kind of looks a bit like a star, doesn't it? Especially if I hold it up like that. Yeah, I can see that. And so this is actually, funnily enough, very similar to diamond and the way that diamond's atoms are actually all joined together. They are made up of simple triangle shapes and then you've actually got this big complex structure that makes it very, very strong. So if I had enough marshmallows, I think this one could have gone quite high, but I ran out, so I only had one on top. Oh, and my spaghetti's starting to break now that I'm trying to move it. 
But you can see, as we move it this way, it looks really, really complex when we do it this way. Which is kind of cool. And you start to see almost like a hexagon shape, don't you? Yeah. How many... So, one layer, Rusty. Yep. Has it got six faces? Uh, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven faces. Seven faces. So I'm trying to remember what that uh, what that shape is called, and I think it might be called a heptahedron if it has seven faces. Ah. I don't remember what it is called off the top of my head. <laughs> um. Oh, that's very interesting. Now, I believe we've got a little bit of time left. Oh, and mine's just all broken now. Now that I broke a couple of the bits of um, spaghetti. We've got a little bit of time for either questions and answers, or do you think maybe we've got enough time for that video now? Yeah, I think, uh, I, think I might show the video really quickly. It would be a shame not to. Um, so, friends, uh, you can keep building if you want to keep building, but have an eye up on the screen. So, we've got a video here from... Um, a lady called uh, Jean Cropper, and Jean is an engineer, but maybe a kind of engineer that you never even thought would exist. So I'm going to share uh, this, and very quickly, I just have to click uh, share my sound as well, and then I can play the video. And while this is playing, think of any questions you want, pop it down the bottom. Hello, my name is Jean Cropper. I grew up in a family of engineers. My dad was an engineer. My grandfathers were both engineers. My great-grandfather was an engineer. And my mother was really good at problem solving. So I learned from all of them about building things and materials and grew up making things. My dad taught me to use a bandsaw when I was 10 and we built bookcases together. He taught me electronics so I could solder wires together and build a circuit. And so building things, making things, learning about materials was something I grew up with. I studied math and science all through uh, high school, and my parents encouraged me to do that so that I had lots of choices in, in work. But there's lots of different areas of engineering, and some you've probably never heard of. Now, my dad wanted me to be an engineer, but straightforward engineering wasn't quite right for me, so it took me quite a while to figure out where, where I wanted to be in the profession. And I studied physics and fine art at university, and I ended up going into art and worked for several years before I gradually found my own profession now, which is a mix of both creative fields and, and engineering. And I'm actually a paper engineer. Now, you may have never heard of paper engineering, which makes perfect sense. There's only a hundred of us in the world, but if you see some work, I'm quite sure you'll understand what it is that I do. Have you ever seen a pop-up book? Well, have a look. This is a pop-up haunted house. And you can see that it's made from uh, paper. And a paper engineer builds structures out of paper. And you need to know some math because each of these need to be the same height. And this dimension needs to match this. And this dimension needs to be match to that. So there's many things that need to be quite, quite precise when you're building out of paper. And paper engineering also allows you to make lots of fun stuff. You can make pop-up dragons. You can make pop-up DNA molecules, a double helix out of paper. And then in commercial jobs, I can do pop-up buildings. So this is a brochure. And the back cover, this back cover, this part, and here is all one sheet of paper that's folded in quite a complex way. I'll explain what, what you do to make this happen. First of all, uh, it's a pop-up of a building by Palladio, and the building is just outside of Venice and Villa Rotonda. The, first, I did the drawing of the building itself as a black and white line drawing. And then I divided that line drawing into three sections for three different layers of the structure. If you look at it sideways, you can see the different layers there. And I also needed to figure out how to build that structure, where the tabs were, 
that would join the different parts of it together to make it work. And the, the work of just designing the structure takes about two days for something complex like this. And then I would make uh, handmade mock-ups first of all, and then I would make electronic artwork from that. And then I collaborated with other people to make the commercial piece, because in this case we needed to make 500 of them. So I did the artwork, and then I instructed the graphic designer uh, and handed her my electronic artwork for the shape. And she translated my illustration into color. She was doing the design and the type and the images that would go on my structure. And I also instructed the printer how to print it, so the, the color of the paper, the shape and weight of the paper. And then the die maker, a die maker builds a die to cut and score paper for where it needs to be cut and scored to make the shape. And then the hand assemblers. So I'm a mix of an artist, a marketer, and a very technical print production person who is a paper engineer to project manage the whole thing to come together. So in engineering, there's many, many different professions that you've probably never heard of, and many of them that you might enjoy. So I hope that you have fun uh, discovering new areas of engineering that might be right for you. All right, friends, well, um, goodness gracious, Rusty, you're still muted. Um, so thanks so much for hanging around, friends. So um, uh, now it's Max, isn't it? Max said that he's a paper engineer already, which is which is pretty cool. Um, somebody uh, has to leave, but um, but thanks so much for hanging around, everybody. Um, thanks uh, for your contributions and your comments and your questions. Um, if you've got any feedback, feel free to fill in a little survey that probably will um, drop into your email inbox at some point in the next couple of days. Um, I'd really like to hear the feedback. Uh, remember, I want to see pictures of those towers. I'm going to be just so disappointed if I don't see some great photos of 21 level towers. I can only assume that if you don't, then maybe, maybe All righty. So with that, I just wanted to say I had so much fun. I hope you guys had fun too. Thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully we'll see you next time. Okay, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>